Hi everyone, we welcome you all to this week Tech Tuesday webinar on streaming, data ingestion and replication for real-time analytics. Today's speaker is Sahishnu Sinha, who's a product manager from R&D team. Before we start the session, let's go through some of the housekeeping tips. The webinar is for one hour that includes 15 minutes Q&A. You can post your queries in Q&A box, which will be answered at the end of the presentation. All participants will be muted during the presentation. The session will be recorded and it will be available on our Infra Support YouTube channel and Success Portal where you'll be able to download the slide deck. Please feel free to submit your suggestion or feedback for this session in the post webinar survey. The Success Portal is a micro learning platform that offers free unlimited learning to all the registered users. This feature rich platform help you learn and adopt to Informatica products better. The following are few important links that you can go over later. This will help you in your product adoption journey with Informatica. Over to you, Sahishnu. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks, based on the time zones from where you have joined. My name is Sahishnu, and I take care of mass ingestion files and mass ingestion streaming under CMI umbrella. So without further ado, let's get started with today's session which is solely dedicated to streaming ingestion. A couple of months back, uh, we had a dedicated session on cloud mass ingestion products, uh, wherein we discussed about the four different offerings of CMI. And there also I talked in brief about mass ingestion streaming with a brief demo. But today's session will provide a deep insight about mass ingestion streaming. Agenda. So I'll start with details on market drivers for streaming and IoT. Following this, I will give an overview of a streaming ingestion. Then I'll walk you guys to use case patterns along with custom examples. And then I'll conclude the session with the product demo. So moving on, streaming and IoT market drivers. We all are aware that digitization has boomed and each and every industry has already taken steps or is taking steps towards this. This leads to unprecedented growth in data volume and data diversity. Thus, data diversity is a key driver here. Uh, you can see the numbers here like 46 billion connected devices are there which provide data from different sources such as mobile, social media, videos, audios, etc. And uh, you can imagine like the number of devices, uh, devices are so huge. So the amount of data produced from these devices will also be extremely big in number. So this leads to our second driver, which is data explosion, 64.2 zeta bytes of data per year is generated. Then sensor data is extremely important again and is extremely imperative for big industries to make right decisions and choices. And it is also a major driver for IoT. Similarly, AI and ML projects and analytics on data to make meaning out of them are other potential drivers. So. Analytics can be real-time analytics, enterprise analytics, or self-service analytics. And 60% of companies around the globe are understanding or taking actions after getting insights from the data through analytics. So please be advised that these are not the only drivers which has brought streaming and uh, IoT in limelight. Uh, before talking about streaming ingestion, first I'll talk about what streaming means. Streaming refers to continuous or real-time flow of data. Streaming data is something that is generated continuously by thousands of data sources and is sent simultaneously. It can be social media data, audio video data, logs, IoT data, etc. So Cloud mass ingestion services. Uh, cloud mass ingestion services has four offerings, namely application ingestion, database ingestion, file mass ingestion, and streaming ingestion, which uh, we are discussing today. Let's now talk about streaming data management. 
to make meaning out of any data data needs to be collected and then ingested first which is more about sensing of the need sensing of the data in simple words understanding the need is the first step once the data is collected and ingested take necessary actions to enrich or cleanse data and then distribute the data to the downstream system for further consumption so this is about reasoning like what changes in incoming data is required to make it meaningful for consumption and finally take actions based on the insights from streaming data in other words act to take decisions or in simple words you can say oper operationalize actions the sense reason and act are critical in any customer journey coming to mass ingestion streaming so it is a separately licensed service under cmi umbrella that can ingest data at a scale from any streaming data sources such as logs click stream social media and iot sources the service is capable of processing high volume real time data uh, from streaming sources to on premises and cloud storage uh, like other mass ingestion service real time monitoring of jobs is available with this service as well alerting mechanism is present in case of any issue and data orchestration is another key task which can be achieved here so you can ingest data from different sources such as amazon kinesis amqp then kafka then amazon s3 and this is not the only limited list of sources and those uh, data from those sources can be ingested into target systems such as kafka then kinesis s3 google bigquery google cloud storage so on and so forth and these data then can be consumed for real time analytics enterprise analytics or used by downstream system for further consumption moving on to key capabilities and functionalities wizard driven experience is the first one so no need to switch between multiple windows the common wizard as shown in this picture lets you do everything from definition to deployment like you need to, to uh, provide the definition then select source and target then if you want to insert enrich or cleanse data add some transformations this is optional optional one and finally runtime options like deployment and all which we'll be discussing in our demo second is transformations so streaming ingestion supports some simple transformations such as combiner filter format converter java jolt splitter and python and these transformations help in carrying out operations that you want to perform when ingesting real time data however adding a transformation is optional as uh, that depends upon the users if you require you can add one uh, otherwise you can just skip this next is real time monitoring dashboards are present to visualize real time data processing along with alerting mechanisms so this is a pictorial view a simple pictorial view of the dashboard like you can have a look like the number of records which are being fetched and the number of records which have been loaded onto the target system and finally from the connectivity standpoint there are different sources and targets some of the sources are google pubsub opc ua for iot then rest api amazon kinesis mqtt etc and similarly different target systems which are messaging and data lakes so kafka amazon s3 google bigquery google pubsub azure event hub etc these are the list is really big these are just few of them which we offer as a part of streaming mass ingestion let's uh, discuss about the feature of the cmi service so first is microservice so if i talk about the availability so this ha uh, has high av availability and it also supports kubernetes deployment 
Security is an extremely critical thing for any organization. So when using this service, secured communication is established bit between the service, uh, source and target or bit between uh, service and agent. Second, as mentioned in the previous slide, the service provides a swift experience when it comes to UI. The common wizard is something which is highly praised. You can also edit and redeploy the changes without having a need to restart the flow. Next is uh, monitoring experience. So you can easily monitor real-time jobs since the visualization are clean and easy to comprehend. The information around data flow, be it state, volume, or throughput can be easily obtained. Life cycle of any task, like what is the state, like uh, deploying, stopping, restarting, and deploying and all, is super easy. Fourth is about data enrichment. So as highlighted in the previous slide, seven basic transformations are available to make changes in incoming data. And these are very simple to use. Uh, and these are optional. Next is connectivity. Widely demanding source and target connectors are available. The list has uh, the list here names. Only few, but trust me, the list is pretty long. So a few of the sources and targets are logs, uh, Kafka, Google PubSub, JMS, and similarly the targets that can be Amazon S3, Firehose, Google BigQuery, etc. But as I mentioned, the list is pretty long. And the supported sources and targets are capable to solve industry-wide use cases. Last but not the least, secure agent and engine. So the service runs on both Windows and Linux operating systems. The service is capable to resume from where it has failed. And in case of malformed or distorted incoming messages, it is rejected. Okay, so we have talked a lot on the service till now, but what benefits will a customer get if he or she is using the service? So the service brings a lot of saving, both in terms of time and money, since streaming ingestion provides a single solution for all patterns, and you do not need to look for different solution for different patterns. Moreover, the common wizard makes your experience smooth and hence increases business agility, since creation of tasks will take very less effort and faster processing. So the wizard has a five-step process, like from definition to deployment, definition, then source, then target, then transformations, and finally, runtime options. So just you need to navigate to the windows to create the whole task, and uh, doesn't require any hand coding and all. So thus uh, increases business agility. And then next is the access to streaming and IoT data and analytics on top of uh, data lets businesses take faster decisions and act accordingly. Also, as highlighted earlier, seven transformations are available and these transformations let uh, user cleans data or in his data, thus make it more meaningful and thus increases trust. Next, as the UI has a common wizard and provides a swift connectivity between various sources and targets, this lets users not to hand code making creation of tasks faster with negligible errors. And finally, real-time monitoring and alerting makes troubleshooting faster. So there's a dashboard where you can uh, have a look uh, of the whole task uh, how means how many data are processed? What is the current state? How many? What is the throughput and all? So uh, and and in case of any failure, you get error. So that helps uh, in faster troubleshooting. Moving on, let's have a look on high level architecture of mass injection streaming. So first is like MI streaming package and IICI, IICS establishes secured connection. So this is the step, the connection between MI streaming package and IICS happens. And this is basically MI task. The next is use different sources to fetch data from. 
So these are the let's uh, some of the sources like GMS, Kafka, MQTT, and all. And then data from this sources are sent to the semi streaming package, but this process, and then the process data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and the target data is sent to the target and Connection established between this secure agent and IICS, so it goes like this. The job blocks are updated here. Now let's talk about the use cases. The streaming ingestion has the capability to fulfill multiple users' requirements. It can help in data lakes ingestion as well as real-time analytics. For data lake ingestion. You can ingest streaming and IoT data onto cloud data lakes such as Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage, DataBricks, etc. Then real-time analytics can help companies identify business opportunities and revenue streams that can result in increased profits and improved customer service. You can ingest streaming and IoT data into messaging systems such as Apache Kafka or Amazon Kinesis for analytics. So this is a high-level pictorial graph. Like uh, these are the sources, like can be sensor data, machine data, and whatever. And then collect and edge uh, collect data and edge transformation. Apply transformations to enrich or clean the data. And once that data is processed, that can be uh, monitored in real time. Real time monitoring and life cycle management. And then data is loaded onto the target system, be it data lake or messaging system. And on top of that, analytics can be applied. So ingestion for self-service analytics and streaming analytics, or from the data lakes, the data can be sent downstream for further consumption. Moving on to the next slide, which is about customer success story. Kroger, the American retail company, is one of our customer, and we'll discuss about their use case and how they got benefited from the service. So in a sophisticated environment of IBM MQ series, Kroger maintained a huge number of queues to store all of their cash register receipts. At Kroger, these queues served as a pub sub for a variety of other applications, aiding in inventory analysis and operational readiness. All of this data needed to be duplexed from IBM MQ series to Kroger's data lake in ADLS Gen 2. At first, Kroger tried to create a Java program to transfer the data that would read this data and then store in ADLS Gen to storage buckets using a combination of Azure client apps and APIs. However, we all know that uh, hand coding is a tedious thing to do and um, it needs a lot of effort and in case of any error, so the troubleshooting is really tough. So instead of creating, maintaining and monitoring a Java application to ingestion the transaction logs to their data lake, Kroger was able to establish a single streaming mass ingestion process within their Informatica cloud because they had sufficient capacity in their Informatica cloud licensing. So Kroger was already using uh, IICS and they had sufficient licenses. So they decided to use mass ingestion streaming to achieve uh, whatever they were trying to achieve. So as a result, of this what happened is configuring the ingestion process only took them 10 minutes as opposed to the days of java programming as i mentioned like and as you guys also were like it is a really tedious job to hand code and it also allowed for more sophisticated features like monitoring and file ro rollover actions which allowed them to integrate the ingestion with the rest of their data lake formation and uh, as they didn't know hand coding, so they benefited uh, in effort uh, in terms of effort, be it uh, saving time or saving human effort. Then similarly, the real time monitoring and easy troubleshooting options they also got, and that um, helped them to achieve their business case. Now, we have uh, talked a lot about a streaming ingestion. So let me give you a demo of the product now. But before that, let us have a quick, quick glance on common architecture pattern.
So it is divided into three segments, which is uh, which are sorry, extract and load, transform and analyze and act. Analyze and act is about uh, taking actions, uh, post insights from data. Basically, we can call it analytics. Mass ingestion focuses on extract and load, in which you can load data from various sources, and if required, you can cleanse the data and load into target. If the data which has been ingested need more enrichment, then use other products such as CDI or CDI, etc., to transform the data and do analytics. So once you have loaded the data, then you can uh, send the data for uh, further consumption and use this product to cleanse the data and or enrich the data. However, if the data doesn't need more enrichment, then you can do a direct analytics on the data which has been loaded. And this can be done by skipping the transformation step. So you can simply skip this step and directly auto loading the data in any other target system. Here I have just shown S3 and Kafka. So there are other target mm -hmm. systems as well. And once uh, data is loaded onto the target system, you can simply um, do analytics on top of that. So this uh, uh, was all about uh, common architecture and pattern. So without any further delay, let's quickly jump on to the demo. So this is the uh, screen of IICS and I uh, guess that you guys are already aware of this screen. So after logging onto the platform, you'll get this screen. So I'll not directly jump into creating a task. I'll first talk about uh, uh, administrator thing, where I'll be walking you through licensing thing, service enabling and disabling and connectors. So let me select this one. So this is a bit slow, so it is taking time to open. So licenses, I'll click here. So we already are aware, like now I uh, the platform provides the IPU based uh, subscription. Earlier it was non-IPU based. So for non-IPU based, we uh, were having this cloud unified mass ingestion license. And few of the customers are currently using this as well. And if uh, a customer is using this uh, particular license, then under features, it will be registered. Like my, if I'm using streaming, so it will be registered. Let me show you that one. There is CMI streaming agent, and I'll scroll down a bit so you can see mass ingestion streaming. So this is non-IPU one. And now we are aware like currently Informatica provides IDM silk platform, which is intelligent data management cloud. And this is the IPU one, and most of the customers currently, which we are having, uses this uh, subscription. So again, here also uh, the streaming thing is registered, like CMI streaming agent. And then, if I scroll down, you'll be able to see mass ingestion streaming. Here it is. One more thing here is like uh, IDMC provides a list of connectors. Suppose there are 100 connectors which are currently provided by IDMC, but a customer requires a connector which is not, uh, which doesn't come with IDMC. So that particular connector needs to be bought separately. Suppose AMQP is one such connector which uh, is supported by CMI streaming, but does, it doesn't come with IDMC. So if a customer wants to use this one, then the customer has to buy a separate subscription for this particular connector. Then uh, uh, coming to the enabling and disabling of the services. So let me go to the runtime environment. So suppose I click here, Anyone agent group? Here I'll select enable or disable services. So we all know that IDMC provides a number of services like mass streaming files, application integration, data integration. So whatever services one requires can enable or disable through this window. And one catch here is like uh, 
when this March in ingestion stemming is selected, so by default data integration is selected. If I remove this one and click that one, so it has gone. So if I select this one, so nothing else is get selected. But if I select mass ingestion streaming, so by default data integration option gets activated. Another thing is the connectors. So under uh, unified mass ingestion uh, subscription, what was happening is like there was no option to uh, select the customers, those only uh, connectors which are required. Suppose unified mass ingestion is offering 10 connectors. So if a customer is using that particular service, so all details of all the 10 connectors gets downloaded onto the secure agent irrespective of the connectors which they will be using or not. But uh, IDMC lets the customer select those only connectors which they require. Other connect and the details of that particular connector will only get downloaded onto the secure agent will, will help in saving the memory. The details of the other customers uh, sorry, not customers, other connectors doesn't get downloaded. So this is a feature of IDMC. And now moving on to the connections part. So creating a new connection is again an easy task here. You can directly click the new connection tab uh, in the previous window. And then after clicking that one, you'll get a form to fill up uh, where you can provide all the details like, like a client ID, client secret, tenant ID, and whatnot. And these are customer specific. So if A is one customer, so they have a different information around this one. And if B is another customer, so they'll have a different uh, information around these things. So I hope this is clear. So let me quickly move on to mass ingestion now. So if you want to create a new task, then simply uh, click new and then select streaming ingestion. So this kind of window will open and then you can define the task. So I have already uh, having a created task. So I'll open that one and I'll edit that one. Let me type it here and then search it. This is the one, so I'll edit this one only. So the first is the definition tab. So here you can provide the name of the task. I'll just try to transfer data from Kafka. So I'll write that one, Kafka two. Then uh, using this browse button, you can select the location where you want to store this particular task. So it is selected by default. So I'll be selecting this only. Then runtime environment is the secure agent where you want to execute this task. So from this drop down menu, you can select the secure agent. So for me, I'll be selecting this one and then description and description. So this is a non mandatory field. If you want to detail around what this particular task is, so you can input that one. So I'll just simply input like transfer data from Kafka to Kafka. Then click on next. So uh, the connection. So this will uh, let you input the source connection, the source from where the data will be fetched. So again, this is a drop down menu. You can click this one and select different sources. So currently we are fetching data from Kafka only. So I'll select Kafka connection working. There's already created connection. Then connection type is will come as Kafka. Then you need to input the uh, topic from where the data will be fetched. So again, you can select that one from this drop down or this dialog box, or you can create that uh, or simply input the, uh, the topic name here and it will be created during runtime. So, but I haven't, this is input like SRC, so I'll let it be. And similarly, after this is done, 
so you can uh, input the advanced properties for kafka so kafka has a consumer group and a producer group so a consumer group is a set of consumers which cooperate to consume data from some topics the partitions of all the topics are divided among the consumers in that group and as a new member uh, as as uh, some new member arrives and old members leave the partitions are reassigned so that each member receives a proportional share of partitions and this is known as rebalancing of the group so for so for those uh, consumer group some of the advanced properties are here and that can be better found here like consume uh, consumer configuration so like fetch minimum bytes group id what not so everything is available so uh, those can be input here so for us i am using this one auto or dot offset dot reset so what this will do is like suppose there were uh, five records are there in the topic and i have processed those five but when i re-execute the task so as there are no records now so nothing will process but i want to reprocess those records so auto rest offset restart earliest will fetch the those five records and reprocess that moving on next so similar to source this is the target uh, configuration simply select uh, connection uh, from the list drop down menu then again give the topic name where the data needs to be dumped you can again select from here like we did from in the source tab let it open just show you I did not show that in during uh, source configurations. So let me show it here. So this is the way. Select a topic, so it will give a, a list of topics. Uh, uh, else, if you want to create one, so you can simply input that topic in that uh, box. So you can select here from here, select any and click OK. Or you can simply input here, and then this needs to be configured at Kafka. Similar to Kafka consumer properties, there is a consumer group, there is a Kafka producer group. So the Kafka producer group is conceptually much simpler than the consumer since it has no need for group coordination. The source group requires a coordination, though this doesn't require coordination. A producer partitioner maps each message to a topic partition and the producer sends a produce request to the leader of that partition. The partitioners shipped with Kafka guarantee that all messages with the same non-empty key will be sent to the same portion. So this is how uh, Kafka producer group uh, works. And again, similar to so advanced property for uh, consumer, we can put here for uh, producer. Similarly, there are two other options, when it's, but these are not mandatory. And then similar to uh, other the previous property, other properties like fetch, uh, metadata fetch timeout in millisecond. So you have to input the seconds for which the metadata, the service will try, the task will try to fetch metadata uh, before going timeout. Similarly, you can input the file size, like once the file size reaches this one, so that gets uh, flushed. So the maximum number, the, the maximum size of a request in the bytes, this value corresponds to maximum request size of Kafka. So these are the Kafka properties. Moving on, transformation page. So this, as I mentioned earlier, so this is optional. So there are seven basic transformations based on the incoming data. So incoming message format can be binary, which is uh, similar to Avro or XML or JSON. So if I select binary, So these are the transformations which are available. But if I select JSON, so seven will be available. So format converter and Jolt. Uh, Jolt is particular to JSON and format converter is applicable for both JSON and XML format. So I'll give a quick definition of these uh, transformations. So combiner, combiner is used to combine multiple event from a streaming source and is always used last. Filter, filter used to remove unwanted details. Python and Java, you can write custom script using these transformations. The splitter is used to split the records. Jolt is only used for JSON messages and it converts complex JSON into simple JSON data. 
format converter is used to convert the data format of XML and JSON incoming messages to Parky format. Currently, only the conversion is uh, applicable for Parky, but is, it is in the roadmap like the conversion can happen both ways to other formats as well. So these are the definitions about uh, the transformation. So let me quickly set up a transformation here. So let me select combiner. You can give anything, combiner transformation. So how many you want to combine set into so 10. These are the option like what will the what can be the maximum size of the file? What can be the time limit? And what will the delimiter? Uh, delimiter? So give it comma or you want to give it a, some other sign so you can that one and then save it so this is done and then move to the next now the runtime options so it is segregated into three sections first is notification management second is agent parameters and third is advanced properties so under notification management, so as the name suggests, like you can trigger a notification. So if you don't want to trigger any notification, so simply click disabled. Else if you want to send a notification, if an error persists for some time, like if I select this one, then you can change the value. And this can go from like two minutes, one minute. Uh, uh, the lower uh, threshold is one and then that can go higher so it will ch check for error for this much time and once the, the error passes for this much time so it, it will trigger mails to the email addresses which have been mentioned here so the time being i'll keep it disabled and please be advised that this is a mandatory feed you have to select either of the two options then next is agent parameters so under this particular uh, box we the first is the reject directory for failed messages so in case of any failure if you want to send those failed messages and store into some directory so you can specify that directory the path of the directory here and though the failed messages will be stored in this directory the next is pure uh, purge ingestion tasks log file if the file size exists so everyone knows like whatever or any task which runs generates log files so if the log files exceed some size and if you don't want to keep the bigger file so you can select this option you can this one you can mention the file size if the file size exceeds 10 mb so you can purge that else if the file size is lesser than 10 mb then you can keep it so again the minimum is zero or it can even go lesser than that and the higher also you can mention and then i'll select 10 minutes for uh, sorry 10 mb here and then finally the log level so what detail of uh, logs you require like uh, do you require logs in detail so you can select these options from here like you just want the info so it will give a info in case of error we want error where the error description is elaborate then you just want the log level to be a warning kind of thing so it will you can select this one and finally the debug one so i'll keep the info as of now then the advanced uh, parameters so this is uh, specific only to kafka here as we are using the kafka as a target as well so this is a combination of key value. So key value pair needs to be specified. There are some parameters. Uh, there are a list of parameters actually, which you can use here. And you can input that one. And based on that, the final uh, runtime options or deployment option will work. So I'm not specifying anything as of now. So this is not configured. Everything is configured. So I'll simply click on save. So once it is saved, you will get a message like successfully updated streaming task this to this. And once it is saved, so you want to deploy it. So simply click deploy. So similar to the save, uh, after saving, you got a message. So similar to that, you will get a message once see the deployment message is also here successfully deployed. So you can check the status in my jobs page here. So this is the first one, Kafka to Kafka. So this is deploying. 
and once it is deployed it will automatically trigger there's no need to run it separately it will automatically trigger once it is completely deployed it is still deploying Yeah, it is deployed and it's up and running. So I'll click this one. So there are no data configured as of now. It takes, and we have used a combiner transformation between. So whatever transformation you have used in a particular task, so all will be available, or you can see those in between source and target it will come as a pipeline. So currently we don't have any data in this, so it will be nothing to display like zero events in source and zero events in target. Uh, so, and there are other options as well, like overview of all the task details, like up and running name, task type and what whatnot. Then in case of alerts, there's nothing to alert. So in case of any alerting thing, a message you'd have observed here. Then from the performance point of view, the total of messages processed and then total KB process. So you can see those things there. And then the pass runs, if there are any pass runs. So if the task has run for five times, so the five posts will be there. So I'll show you uh, already uh, an already executed task here. So let me search it here. That is MP. This one. So I guess there is no transformation in between, but you can see the number of messages processed. Like this is the number of events from source, and this is the targets. It might be like some of them were rejected based on the condition, and it has also run only one. So only one entry is had. So with this, uh, we come to an end of demo. So let's move back to the slides. So moving on. So now to summarize. First is cloud native ingestion. So we have unified service, which also lets you do orchestration as I discussed in the previous slides. Then superb connectivity as discussed in previous slide. Uh, you can connect to cloud on premises, IOT, streaming, data lakes and data warehouses. Then next is wizard driven common dashboards, which is simple and easy to use. Seven transformations are available to enrich and cleanse data. And finally, you can monitor the task in real time as the dashboard provides a pictorial view to that may to make the data visualization easy. And also life cycle management is easy. You can know the statuses such as the start, the stop, undeployed, deploy, all those statuses you can view on the dashboard and you can easily make uh, or take decisions based on that. So with this, I conclude the discussion here. You can go ahead and register yourself for a 30 day free trial by clicking the link shown here and try your hands on this, try to use the service. Feel free to shoot your questions. If any, I'll be more than happy to answer those. So thank you. Hi all, we have reached the Q&A part. Please post your questions. Hi, I can see a question from Nandini. 
any tips for performance tuning exercise on lifetime streaming so exactly performance if if we are transferring data from kafka to kafka so as i mentioned in the demo as well like there are some key value pairs which you can mention and that is available on the, there is a list of key value pairs which you can use to optimize your task optimize the process flow and that that will be helpful and other than that when i'm not totally understanding what your exact query so can you please retype what exact kind of performance tuning you are looking for next question i can see from lekha banerji so with respect to iici cs what are some of the unknown pitfalls so currently we are talking only in iics has different components like cmi which is cloud mass ingestion which we currently discussed similarly there are other products under uh, iics one uh, one is cdi uh, which is cloud data integration then apd was another one then cloud data integration elastic so pitfalls in what product you are actually referring to are you referring only to streaming ingestion pitfalls in the sense uh, in the case of any failure in case of any so what uh, major steps Uh, can be taken so if this uh, these kinds of course i'll uh, talk specifically about the streaming ingestion so there are no such issues with this particular product and in case of any failure uh, say a task is being executed and during run time there are some failures so it is automatically handled and when the it is again executed so the execution starts from the uh, time from where it has failed so suppose there are 100 records and out of 100 it is a custom process and then the task has failed so if the task will be retriggered again so there is a mechanism which is already there so it will not go on processing all the records it will start from the remaining ones like 80 process so it will start from the 80 first record so in that way that is handled so there are no such exactly pitfalls here So next is from Sai Konda Raju. So the question is, will you be able to show the source and target messages in Kafka? So for that thing, unfortunately, I won't be able to show it currently because I need to log into the Kafka consoles and whatever data we have at the source, uh, uh, source uh, at the source, so that is already processed. and uh, if i'll show that one so you won't be able to show that uh, see the data in the topic at the source level and again from the target point of view i need to log into the console so uh, that is not currently possible apologies for that again there's a question from lekha can you detail when you say automatically handled so automatically handled in the sense like there is a concept of secure agent secure agent is a uh, engine which is installed locally on your machine and which takes care for the entire execution of the task so so there is automatically handled situation is there is a mechanism available in secure agent there are configurations which are already available in the secure agent so in case of any failure so there is no data loss and uh, as i mentioned the task uh, from where it has failed so it will be executed from there only in that case that is automatically handled you don't need to go into the console or into the secure agent uh, level to retrigger or reconfigure the task that it should start from the time where it has failed so i hope that answers your query then So next question on, uh, is from Nandini. Any Informatica standard on mass ingestion module? Best is standard and practices and lesson learned from different customers. So lesson learned, uh, we talked about uh, Kroger, who is one of our customers who are using another customer which we have is 3M. So they are also currently using uh, this uh, product and they are uh, uh, transferring data from Kafka to Snowflake. using the streaming ingestion so 
in case of what to say best practice what you can uh, what they did is like they also had they have been processing data in tbs like uh, when they onboarded the service so in the very first month they processed around 1.3 tbs of data and then subsequently in subsequent months 1.2 tb or 1 tb so similar this was the fashion which uh, in which they were processing those data so the challenge which they were facing was with a snowflake connection and uh, when they were trying to uh, process our data so the connection was not working fine so in between from the informatica point of view or best practice what we can do what we did is we in in between use a jdbc connector to optimize optimize the data flow and along with that in the, whatever failures they were processing they were face, uh, facing during processing of data so that was being handled using uh, Uh, a intermediate uh, object which was pl placed in between uh, uh, and that was jdbc driver so in that way that wasn't we were also aware we we were on to, uh, also aware on that one so we did some rnd on that and then probably we came up with the solution and uh, help the customer and that uh, again uh, is mentioned by knowledge guide and it is a practice which we are now uh, suggesting other customers in case they are uh, facing any challenge that no click So again, a question from Lekha. We have noticed issues with respect to ODBC drivers that have led to loss of data. So, is it specific to streaming ingestion and uh, and where there are no issues at all? So, I mean, those questions need to be answered. Then probably we can say like what the exact problem was there and which led to the data loss. And this was attributed to issues within the product. So, and I hope the ticket might have been opened with the support team when uh, you face this issue, and then probably I'm not sure exactly what the issue was, what support team did. So I won't be able to exactly comment here. So probably a detail around this one will be helpful. So look into this one. and one more question again from lekha is uh, example with respect to performance uses of odbc jdbc drivers for data movement so means it is it is uh, you are talking about streaming in the sense right so currently if i talk about the sources or target so there is nothing jdbc odbc drivers we don't support as of now and uh, what is the other one jdbc as i mentioned like uh, the uh, 3m use case which i just talked about so implementation of that one between the in the task uh, from and whatever data we are talking of kafka to snowflake that was a use case for the 3m so using jdbc drivers uh between the task flow so that helped in some performance improvement and then again key value pair which i mentioned in the additional properties uh when you are creating the task and in addition to that uh, when you are considering the source and target as well so there also are additional properties related to kafka and not even not only to kafka the other sources or targets which you are selecting as a source or a target so again you will get an option of additional uh, parameters or properties which you can configure there Uh, to uh, improve your performance, so the list of all those additional properties you can find on the websites of the uh, particular uh, particular product which are using as a source. Suppose, uh, just for example, as I showed there, that we were using Kafka, so you can query on Kafka like different properties which will help you to improve your performance. Similarly, for target also, suppose if you are using GB to target Google, BigQuery is the target which is supported in streaming. so again a list of parameters will be available there and you can uh, pick that one and uh, based on your use case you can use that one to improve the performance so i hope this answers the queries which last six minutes left so any more questions please feel free to post here i'll be happy to answer
Any more questions? We have five more minutes, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. It seems there are no more questions. So thank you guys for joining us. So over to you, Harshita. Uh, okay, we will go ahead and end the webinar, Sahishni. Yeah, we have we have two more minutes, but I don't see the persons coming in. Yeah. If they can, if they have questions, send an email. Yes. Would you like to prepare yeah. an answer? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so my email address is sahsinha at the rate informatica.com. I'll repeat once again. So it is sahsinha at the rate informatica.com. So you can report your queries if you have any, and I'll be happy to answer those. So thank you once again for joining us. Thank you for the wonderful presentation, Sahishna. Uh, we request our audience to take up the survey and let us know your thoughts. Today's webinar will be available tomorrow on Success Portal under the Resources tab. Uh, thank you all for attending. Thank you.